Perhaps you find yourself facing the possibility of getting on a waiting list for an organ transplant and are considering options. Or you may be on a list and curious about the outcomes at the program where you are listed. Or you may have already received your transplant and wish to keep tabs on the program where you received your transplant. The Scientific Registry of Transplant Recipients produces reports for the public with great detail on pre- and post-transplant outcomes. The SRTR is required to publish reports to present this data to the public. These program-specific reports, or PSRs, are published twice annually in July and January. Centers for Medicare Services monitors transplant outcomes. Transplant programs are required by CMS to send information to their candidates on the waitlist. This incentivizes programs to keep on top of their outcomes and strive for excellence. The CMS requires programs to provide data on their one-year outcomes for both patient and graft survival. Programs gather this data from the SRTR PSRs. The specific data CMS is looking for is the estimated probability for the program and the nation, also called observed, and the expected probability for the program for both graft and patient survival metrics. To meet the requirement, some programs send Section A, the program summary, and tables C6 and C12. Some create their own reports from the data, and yet others send the whole report. If you have received this report, this video will help you understand what you, as a patient, need to look at. A PSR is a program-specific report, that is, a document reporting information related to a specific program. Data is gathered by an organization called the Organ Procurement and Transplantation Network, or OPTN. SRTR takes that data, as well as data from other sources, and analyzes it using medical industry-accepted biostatistical methods. SRTR then produces the PSR reports to be published for the public. Each report references just one specific program. By SRTR definitions, each organ is portioned into its own program. A hospital or transplant center may have multiple programs. They may be large enough to have programs for each solid tissue organ, or they may just have programs for a few of the highest volume organs, or one program for the highest volume organ, kidney. Cleveland Clinic in Florida, for instance, has kidney, liver, and heart programs, so they would have a separate report for their kidney program, their heart program, and their liver program. Originally, SRTR produced these reports for the benefit of each program to self-monitor their outcomes for both the waitlist activity and post-transplant survival. The reports were not initially designed with patients in mind. SRTR worked to develop a website that can help patients better understand the data and compare centers. But if a patient really wants more detail, the PDF version of the PSRs is the best resource for greater detail. As mentioned before, you may have received a report from a transplant program, or you may just want to look at your listing program's data in more detail. Perhaps you wish to look at other programs' details to compare. If you want to review more detailed statistical data on your program or others, the PSRs can be found on the SRTR website at www.srtr.org. You can find the reports in one of two places. Perhaps you wish to look at the kidney program at Mayo. You would start at the Find and Compare Transplant Programs tool at the top of the page. Here you would select your organ of choice, for instance, kidney. You can type in the program's name, then click the blue search button, and the website will take you to the search results page. On the search results page, you will see your selected program. Click on the View Complete Report PDF link here. The second location for these reports is on the summary page for the program you're interested in. Scroll to the bottom and click on the Download Full PDF button here. When you open the link, it will bring up a page that looks like this. At the very top in the heading, you will see your program's name, the date this report was released to the public, and a cutoff date for the data being considered. You will also find the contact information for SRTR if you have any questions. The first three pages labeled User Guide give a high-level overview of what information you will find in the following pages. The fourth page is the Table of Contents. 
Since this video is created for the benefit of transplant candidates, we won't cover every detail of the report. We will focus on the areas that patients are usually concerned with. We will also cover the data transplant programs are required to report. Overall, by looking at this contents page, you can see SRTR generally reports first on the outcomes for candidates after listing and then for recipients after transplant. As mentioned previously, transplant programs are required to submit information to candidates on their observed outcomes versus the nation's observed outcomes, as well as their expected outcomes for both patient and graft survival. But what does this data mean? You can see on this page of the PSR, figure A4 shows a rate of survival for both graft and patient survival statistics for what was observed versus what was expected. A graft is the placement of a new organ, or in the case where a pair of kidneys are placed together, that would also be considered one graft. When you look at the difference here in the height of the bars in the graft failure side compared to the patient death side, the graft side is higher. This is because a recipient can receive another graft if the first one fails. There can be a greater number of grafts considered than patients, since one patient's multiple grafts can be considered in the graft survival numbers. But this one figure only tells you part of the required information. It shows you the number of failures that were reserved, or estimated, compared to what was expected for that program. But to find the national rates, you would have to look in another location. In Table C6 of the PSR, you will find the graph survival statistics for one year follow-up. Currently, this table shows data collected for every recipient receiving a graft from July 1, 2016 through December 31, 2018. But these reports are released every six months, so that time range will progress forward six months every six months. This number is the number of recipients counted in that two and a half year time frame. This number is not a count of how many grafts or placed organs failed in that two and a half year time frame, but rather how many failed within one year of their transplant. Likewise, this number is how many SRTR expected would fail within the first year. This percentage is basically the observed survival rate. SRTR refers to this number as the estimated probability because we don't yet have a full year of follow-up data for patients transplanted in the last six months. So SRTR estimates the probability based on what we do know. This is also done for the nation. These two numbers are required by CMS to be reported to candidates by the program. This number is the expected and is also required by CMS to be reported. SRTR derives the expected rate by developing risk adjustment models and applying the risk to each patient based on their medical characteristics. The risk of each patient is added up to get the result you see here. Table C12 of the PSR displays patient survival statistics. Like the graph survival table, these numbers are required by CMS to be reported to candidates by programs. The information in the PSR is already summarized on the SRTR website at www.srtr.org. We have taken several points of interest for candidates and potential candidates. The PSR, however, will give you even more detail. On the srtr.org site, we summarize the overall activity for the program's waitlist candidates, but the PSR goes into greater depth. In the PSR report, you can see the demographic breakdown of candidates on the list at this program or you can see more detail on why candidates may have been removed from the list. In the Time to Transplant section on srtr.org, you can see the percentage of candidates that received their transplant within 30 days, one, two, or three years from listing, but the PSR has even more detail. Here's that same report in the PSR, but in the PSR, you can see the detailed breakdown of the characteristics of recipients at this program. This way, you can see if the program transplants patients like you. Back on the website summary page, you can see a section where we show age, a common characteristic for patients that is a factor in their outcomes probability. But in the PSR reports, we have even more information on other characteristics that may also be important factors to candidates and recipients. On the website summary page, there is data on the post-transplant outcomes. Specifically, this information is graft survival data for recipients' one-year follow-up period. The PSR has information about patient survival at one year and about graft and patient survival probabilities at three years. Some candidates may need a multi-organ transplant, such as kidney and liver together. 
there are not enough of these types of transplants for SRTR to develop meaningful metrics, so currently SRTR only reports numbers. If you may be in need of a multi-organ transplant, this page will tell you if a program has done that type of transplant, and the volume will tell you how experienced they are with that type of transplant. Finally, for kidney and liver programs, the PSRs contain some data on donor outcomes for living donors. At this time, SRTR only shows that follow-up was done with living donors at the program. SRTR is still in the process of developing the metrics for living donor outcomes. More information will become available in the future. For more specific information on how to use these tools and resources, contact an SRTR representative at srtr at srtr.org.